previously in Battlestar Galactica. And South Park was quickly approaching its 200th episode, so Trey and Matt decided they'd do something special for it. If you don't know, it's very offensive to show a drawing of Muhammad in Muslim culture. Showing him in any sort of form is very offensive. And then we come to this scene. They put Muhammad inside of a bear costume so that you couldn't technically see him, and they are about to give him over to Tom Cruise. After this episode aired, this one guy, I don't even know how to fucking say his name. I don't think I should say his name. This one guy basically went on the South Park forums and doxed their information, encouraged other people to take their lives and that they would probably end up like Theo Van Gogh, a cartoonist who was actually murdered for depicting Muhammad. If you saw my last video, I talked about the South Park episodes 200 and 201, and how some Muslim extremists threatened the lives of its creators Trey Parker and Matt Stone for depicting the Prophet Muhammad, leading to the episode being censored and hidden from publicity. If you haven't seen the video, well, I just explained it right now, and again in the opening sequence. After the South Park episode was censored, it caught the attention of an American cartoonist named Molly Norris. She made a post to her Facebook page on April 20th, 2010. The post featured an anthropomorphic teacup, domino, pasta, spool of thread, a purse, and a cherry, each claiming to be the real likeness of Muhammad. The poster read, In light of the recent veiled HA threats aimed at the creators of the television show South Park by bloggers on Revolution Muslims' website, we hereby deem May 20th, 2010 as the first Everybody draw Muhammad Day. Do your part to both water down the pool of targets and, oh yeah, defend something our country is famous for, but maybe not for long? Comedy Central cooperated with terrorists and pulled the episode, The First Amendment, sponsored by the Citizens Against Citizens Against Humor, or CACA. CACA isn't actually a real thing. It was a joke organization added on to satirize capitalism. Essentially what the poster is saying is that if so many people draw Muhammad out of protest, the extremists would not be able to target every single person who drew them. And it showed that the United States wouldn't be intimidated by terrorists. Some people have criticized the event saying that it's offensive to Muslims, not just Muslim terrorists. And that's just kind of teasing. If you ask me, personally, I'm going to participate in it, since I'm an avid supporter of freedom of speech, freedom of expression, I understand their risks, and I agree with the message. I know it might offend some Muslims, but all art can offend somebody in some way, and truthfully, I kind of don't care how people I don't know feel about it. There was actually a quote in a South Park episode that aired back in 2007 that I think applies well here. If anything, we should all make cartoons of Muhammad, and show the terrorists and the extremists that we are all united in the belief that every person has a right to say what they want. For the past few decades, we haven't had to risk anything to defend it. But those times are going to come, and one of those times is right now. And if we aren't willing to risk what we have, then we just believe in free speech. But we don't defend it. So the date was set. May 20th, everyone would draw Muhammad to protest censorship and to protect the First Amendment in the United States. Basically overnight, the Facebook post exploded in popularity, being reported on by numerous news outlets such as the Washington Post and Vox. It was circulated between bloggers of Seattle, and even Dan Savage, a very popular author, journalist, and activist for progressive politics, reposted it to his blog on April 22nd. He was also in many podcasts and interviews, including Kiro FM, which is a popular Seattle radio station which specializes in talk radio. Uh, this cartoonist, Molly Norris, is piling on with uh, something called Everybody Draw Mohammed Day. Really, Molly? You sure you want to do this? Yeah, I want to water down the targets. The event was spreading like wildfire. Some people would say it was getting out of control. People like Molly Norris. Molly Norris realized that this may be considered an attack on religion as a whole and offend people who have nothing to do with the intimidation, so she reiterated on a podcast that her motivation for the protest was not simply to defend the South Park creators, but it was to support the right to free speech, and nothing else. But nonetheless, tension grew, and on April 25th, just five days after the event was announced, Molly stated on her website, I did not intend for my cartoon to go viral. I did not intend to be the focus of any group. I practice the First Amendment by drawing what I wish. This particular cartoon of a poster seems to have struck a gigantic nerve, something I was totally unprepared for. I am going back to the drawing table now. She doubled down the next day, officially absolving herself from the event. 
stating, I am not involved in Everybody Draw Muhammad Day. I made a cartoon that went viral and I am not going with it. Many other folks have used my cartoon to start websites, etc. Please follow them as I am a private person who draws stuff. She also approached Savage and asked him to replace the original cartoon that he'd reposted to his website with a less incendiary variant, to which he refused. When he asked why she publicized it initially, she responded meekly saying, because I am an idiot. And on the same day, the creator of the official Facebook page, Dave Wellington, dropped out, saying, I am aghast that so many people are posting deeply offensive pictures of the Prophet. Y'all go ahead if that's your bag, but count me out. After this, she got a lot of flack for it, with some people arguing that she never truly meant what she was saying and that she's wimping out, very mature of this article, which kind of exacerbated the problem and ironically caused more people to be even more adamant in participating in the event, to kind of protest Molly in a way, to show just how strong they are and how thoroughly they believe in freedom of speech. I wouldn't say these people were doing this to be vicious or to outright defy Molly, and definitely nobody did it to further put her in jeopardy. They were doing it because they were arguing for freedom of speech. What I wish people had done was just accept that Molly was no longer part of it, and just ignored any attachment she had to it in the first place instead of making the whole point of it to go against Molly. They should have just proceeded with the event independently. The most likely reason as to why people didn't do this is because people are always looking for someone to villainize to extend their point, to progress themselves, to make themselves look better. Being able to put someone down to service your own point, to quote-unquote expose people who are faking it, to show that I'm a real person who believes this, and this is a fake person that believes in this, is something I see many people praise. The concept of taking down the corporate pig and standing victorious above them is something we find virtuous in our society. Oh, I don't know. Is it that we collectively thought Steve Jobs was a great man, even when we knew he made billions off the backs of children? Or maybe it's that it feels like all our heroes are counterfeit. I believe that's exactly what happened here. Funny how times change, but people don't. The movement continued, Molly kept getting associated, Molly tried to shift the event to being focused on Al Gore, and on May 1st she uploaded another poster. This time a heavily edited version of the poster putting into more context of what she claims her original intentions were, although many people were skeptical about her sincerity. Meanwhile, an IT specialist in Toronto, Canada, known as Mimi, tried to take the wheel of the event, and to allow themselves to be publicly responsible for it, not Molly. It was something they wanted to fight for, while at the same time exculpating Molly from being at risk. The event was now officially back on, but with a caveat. One of the guidelines Mimi added was that you couldn't submit a drawing that incited violence or was pornographic in nature. While I didn't know Gab was in charge of this event, this somewhat contradictory rule was added in sort of as a balance between being able to draw Muhammad or not. Some obscure balance in the middle of that. Again, people had mixed reactions about this. Some were saying that, yeah, it makes sense, it's the most fair, each side gets sort of what they want, it's a compromise, while more people argued that it should be all or nothing. This led to a surprisingly diplomatic outcome, though, with most people accepting Mimi as the leader, but people wanting to draw offensive stuff not associating it with the particular event. The date was drawing closer and closer, with the group now reaching members as high as 100,000. At the same time, another Facebook page came up countering the event called Everybody Against Everybody Draw Muhammad Day. This page essentially was saying that the event was endangering Mali and that it's offensive to Muslims. What I don't think this page actually realizes, though, is that they're actually feeding way more fire to the fuel than I think they realize. Calling more attention to these arguments and putting the event on display like this causes more attention to it and makes the assumption that Molly's involved at all in it, and it's ultimately riling up the chaos much more effectively than the event on its own. Keep in mind, the event at this point was being run by Mimi, not Molly, and these guys were still assuming that it was run by Molly, and were saying, you guys are endangering Molly by doing this, even though most people had accepted at this point that Molly had nothing to do with it, either because they are villainizing her as not being a real free speech advocate, or out of her own safety. The page was reported as having as high as 110,000 supporters, Supporters. I understand being against someone else and protesting an event, but when one of your arguments is that it's endangering someone's life, maybe you shouldn't endanger someone's life by doing it? Seems counterintuitive. With all this chaos happening, nobody knew what was next, but what did happen next was unpredictable. 
On May 19, 2010, just a day before the event occurred, the Pakistan equivalent of the Supreme Court, the Lahore Court, blocked Facebook indefinitely in response to the event. They figure the best and most reasonable course of action is to restrict the information its citizens can consume, and won't allow the citizens to make their own opinions on it. Molly Norris and the event should not be blamed at all for this. This is completely out of the idiocy of the Pakistan government. But it's tragic to think that a protest wanting to open conversation led to an entire country getting a website many of them had integrated into their lives, just outright blocked. And you might be thinking they could just use a VPN to get around it, but... You gotta remember, this is 2010 Pakistan. If you ask somebody in 2010 what a VPN is, they'd tell you it's very pointless nerd shit. And I'm not the only one who thought that this was unfair. CEO of the Pakistan company Nayatal, Wahaj Disaraj, said, Blocking the entire website would anchor users, especially young adults, because the social networking website is so popular among them, and they spend most of their time on it. Basically, our judges aren't technically sound. They have just ordered it, and it should have been done in a better way, by just blocking a particular URL or link. And yeah, that's pretty much what happened. And that conversation of the government restricting websites and information is still going on today, 10 years later. And this is essentially where it came from. This debacle actually resulted in more websites being censored, such as Flickr and Wikipedia. While prominently calling more attention to something is usually the most effective course of action, a more tactical and thought out plan should always be what you go with. So finally, the event came around with surprisingly little complications. Hundreds of thousands of drawings were entered. Some of my personal Personal favorites are this parody, drawn in the style of my favorite painting, The Treachery of Images by Renee McGrath, where it normally says, this is not a pipe, it reads, this is not a pipe, this is Muhammad. I find this entry clever because in the original painting, the statement, this is not a pipe, was referring to how the painting itself is not a pipe. It is a painting representing a fictional pipe. The statement that the original painting is making is that it's important to discern fiction from reality. As much as this painting of a pipe looks like a pipe, it is not one. It is a painting, much like how a painting of Muhammad would just be considered a painting of one. It's an important and notable distinction people should make. Again, it's funny how times change, but people don't. The winner of the event was a connect the dots picture, which essentially stated that it's only Muhammad if you make the effort to see it as Muhammad. If you connect the dots, you can see it as Muhammad. If you don't, you just look at it, it's not. It also kind of comments upon the idea of death of the author, the belief that the author's interpretation of their work is just as valid as anyone else's. So yeah, yeah, the event came and went peacefully. Molly Norris can live her life worry-free now, right? On July 11, 2010, it was reported that a man by the name of Anwar Al-Olaki had put Molly Norris on a hit list. If you're unfamiliar with who this man is, he was centrally involved in 9-11 terrorist attacks, he was involved in the Fort Hood shootings, he was allegedly involved in the 2009 Christmas Day bombing of an American airliner. He is one of the most prolific terrorists that you've never heard of. He also ran a magazine called Inspire in which he wrote, The medicine prescribed by the Messenger of Allah is the execution of those involved, and was quoted as saying, The large number of participants makes it easier for us because there are more targets to choose from in addition to the difficulty of the government offering them all special protection. But even then, our campaign should not be limited to those who are only active participants. The FBI had warned Molly Norris that they considered it a very serious threat. The threat against Norris appeared to be renewed when the 2013 edition of Inspire put her in a pictorial spread entitled Wanted Dead or Alive for Crimes Against Islam and captioned, Yes we can. A bullet a day keeps the infidel away. <laughs> Molly Norris has since changed her name and gone into hiding. Since then, she's still in hiding, and threats against her life continue to this day. And that's the story of Molly Norris, a woman associated with an event she wanted nothing to do with, purely because people wanted it to suffice their own agenda. Now, I'm not saying that freedom of speech isn't something you shouldn't stand up for. What I'm saying is, you shouldn't make it a point to say, I'm going against you. You're not a real free speech advocate, and I am, and this is why. Especially with something as fucking critical as this. Just argue the points someone is making. Don't argue with the person. Thank you so much for listening. I really had a lot of fun researching and making this video. It was a really interesting topic to me. I really hope you enjoyed it. And...